Hello. Hello. I Episode seven ninety. Like Hello. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Episode seven ninety. Braid Candy Podcast. Creeping up on the old eight hundreds. Eight hundred. That's when I it's like going to get real good. I think. You, oh, you know what? It goes every other hundred or so. You say you're like. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, oh no, this is going to be terrible. And then maybe for like mm. five hundred, you're like, this, this, these ones are going to be great. So yeah, I'm thinking real good for eight hundred. Yeah, I have a good feeling about it. We're just. I never like it when the year has, has the an eight in it. Like I'm not looking forward to 2028 because I. This is going to sound silly, but I don't like writing eights. Because oh. I can never decide if I'm doing two different circles connecting or doing that yeah. loopy swoopy thing. Yeah, the sideways infinity. Yeah, I go back I mean, and forth, and I never like them either way. And then like the bubbles don't line up. I'm like, oh fuck, that's gonna be yeah. a tough year for you. Tough year, tough year. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we have time to prepare. Yeah, we do. We do. We'll be okay. How are you? Oh, I'm doing Are you good. holding I'm up all, over there? I'm holding up. I'm. All, I went to. Oh, fun thing! I got out of the house for the first time in four weeks. That was very exciting. Oh I went to the Denver Museum of Science and Nature. And nice. Here's what you should know about me, if you don't know this already. If it is fun for ages five to ten, it will also be fun for Sarah. And it was That's especially sweet hilarious spot. when I walked in there, and there was a little girl who was literally wearing the exact same outfit as me. Like, head to toe, <laughs> same boots, too. I was like, oh. Wow. And Eli's like, I see it, too. And I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. in my happy place. Like, I've even dressed That's like it. the children here. But so they, they have all these exhibits. And, and the one that I, I, of course, was really interested in after all of our conversations we've had recently was the space exploration yes. exhibit. And, like, little, like, it's very interactive, you know, like a science museum is. And they had the, the thing that, that really stood out to me. They had this. Uh, area like this little board where you can smell what space smells like no and you might be like oh space smells like nothing well no they absolutely know what it smells like because the uh like certain mm, mineral like the the stuff in the air basically this particles that are in the air and all the different Mm -hmm. elements and stuff that when they mix together certain ones have certain smells like the air of jupiter smells like raspberries what? No. Yes. For There's real? like an ethanol, like ethanol something else that mixes together. And then we don't have, because space out in outer space, there's like, it's void of anything. There's nothing out there. But there are reports <laughs> from astronauts of what it smells like. And you could smell it when they like go back into the space station. They take off their spacesuit. The other astronauts can smell it as well. And it mm-hmm. smells a little bit like, like rotting meat, like barbecue in a weird way, like barbecue and tires. It's what? nasty. And then I thought it smelled terrible. And Eli was like, oh, that smells good. It's like a campfire. Like, it's like smoky. No, yeah. No, hate it. Gross. Terrible. Disgusting. But That's yeah. Really so strange. knowing what outer space smells like was so What crazy. would you have predicted it smelled like? I would have thought musty. Oh, oh, like an old closet, <laughs> like a Goodwill. <laughs> like my mom's basement. <laughs> Yeah. Like a good okay. That is such a good question. What do you think outer space smells like? I yeah. think it would smell more yeah, must or like almost but that doesn't make sense. Almost like what it smells like after the rain, but I know that that's like a lot of particles and that's a whole bunch of stuff getting churned up. We talked about that mm. in the past episode yeah, that's, about what you that think that's rain too complex. Is. Too complex. There's like nothing out there. So that my mind goes to I don't know clean laundry, but that also that sounds make. nice. Right? Nope. Just smoky like, bones know. or whatever. What did you yes. say? Yes, fucking nasty smoky bones. Wow, it's like Guy Fieri. Vegans That's are gonna fucking smells. hate it. Yes, yes. Space is gonna smell like Guy Fieri. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Wow, Flavor Town. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I also saw, speaking of Guy Fieri, two Guy Fieri updates for you. One, a wow. local ski, yes, I know, a local <laughs> ski resort near us. I, I almost sent you the video, but I was like, no, I think I just have to tell her to set her up for it. A local yeah. ski resort up here, A Basin, uh, Arapaho Basin, I think that's the full name, has a day where everybody dresses up like Guy Fieri and skis the mountain. <laughs> 
Wow. So it's, I'm like, I wonder if that could be Susie's gateway into no. Even Guy Fieri powder. can't do it. <laughs> into <laughs> Guy Fieri, she can't even be tempted with donkey sauce. Of, so, all, okay. the, of all the celebrities, right. why do you think they chose him? I have no idea. Maybe it's because, I was going to say it comes with good accessories, like, you, like it's easy to find like the the shirts with flames on them maybe i don't know yeah and like are you gonna dress hair. up like guy no i don't have a season pass to that that mountain and to also Flavortown. i will not be skiing i do not have a season pass to Flavortown. <laughs> that is free flavor town's free entry i fucking That's hope so somebody funny. made that joke that day <laughs> and then my other uh, Guy Fieri update is that no, it was not really update, but uh, I saw that somebody threw a guys and dolls party where people either dress like Dolly Parton or Guy Fieri. And I was like, fuck, we need to do that. Wow. Man, he's a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. Iconic. I feel like he might be for Gen. What's Gen, what's the Z. after Gen Z? Like even after that, uh, uh, Susie just made a face. It was great. I just like, uh, <laughs> I can't get past Could it. Contempt, right? Uh, it might be kind of like how I looked at Bob Ross or maybe, you know, it's kind of like okay. it feels a little bit like novelty throwback. Yeah. And like wholesome, like, yeah, nothing controversial, just yeah, funny, funny, uh, identifiable hairdo, mm-hmm. easy go to Halloween costume. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, how, I'm glad Catch we know phrases. this. Yeah. Yeah. This, yep. Yeah. He's a real character. That maybe guy. that's like a recipe for how to be a a cultural phenomenon. Like you just need a recognizable hairdo. Al, yeah, a, a weird owl kind of fits into this too. Yeah, you're right. They they that's are not formula. subtle. These people. Dolly no. Parton too. It's yeah. flashy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all Maybe I got our the, earth tones overall episodes. combo <laughs> right. isn't cutting the mustard. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, I'll take that note. Good yeah. to know. <laughs> Thanks for those updates. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, you know. A lot of Guy Fieri keep, content. Uh, keep, so I keep far. you on your toes. That's right. You really do. So does Guy. Yeah. Um, I'm sure something that Guy Fieri would approve of is delicious wild grain bread. Am I right? I approve of this. Yeah, man. This stuff I just is actually tasty. found. I cleaned out my my freezer and I found in there, buried at the bottom, some breakfast biscuits, nice. cranberry and orange. Oh, yes, so good. I busted those out and I ate all of them because Eli's on keto, which means more for me. <laughs> well, they have fresh breads, fresh pastas, fresh pastries. They have chocolate chip cookies. I've gotten so many. Things. In fact, I just added for my box this month Bavarian pretzels. Oh my god, I love a pretzel! Right? Make I mean, this meister to go with it. Oh yes, yes. I mean, oh, yeah. You could have the mustard and the yes. cheese. You could yes. go back and forth. Anyway, it's all delicious, super fresh, just convenient as heck, and you can have most stuff in like twenty five minutes. And then uh, right on the table. For a limited time, you can get $30 off your first box, plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash brain candy to start your subscription. You heard me, free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash brain candy. That's wildgrain.com slash brain candy. Or you can use promo code brain candy at checkout. And it's all customizable. Like if you want all pasta, you go for it. Yes. I won't stop you. If I were to All buy right. those four croissants individually at my favorite local bakery, it would be the same price as the entire Wild Green Oh, my box. gosh. I did, I did the math. It's so. a real bargain. Yeah. You're going to you love it. Um. All right. Okay. How about let's start with a little debate. Oh, I love a debate. Or, you know, yeah. 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 Back and forth. So there was yeah. this guy who bought a lottery ticket and went on the app. And saw that he had the winning numbers for $340 million and then went to get his dollars. And they said, oh, whoops a do. That was an accident. We didn't mean to publish those numbers on the app that we were running a test. And you could throw that right in the trash. And he did not throw it in the trash. And he got a lawyer and he wants, he wants that dough. 
I'm on his side. I read okay. this too. Okay. Yeah, I'm so t- you think What do you mean? This feels like Pepsi where's my jet. <laughs> yeah, right. You're so right, Sarah. I'm like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you in your doing whatever you were supposed to do made yeah. an error. Yeah. These are the rule. Th- this is how it goes. You announced this. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. He's going to get that lawyer, and I hope he wins. And ah, fucking A, I'll get out there, and I'll... I'll, I'll You're going to pick protest. it. Protest, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you know how, like, if somebody has, like, a near-death experience, and then they survive, and then they have, like, a whole new, like, fresh outlook on life, and they appreciate yeah. it? This is yeah. the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where, like, you thought everything was going to be amazing. Can you imagine? Could you no, that? no. Oh, I'm actually, I'm physically ill. I'm actually sick to my stomach right now. Cause you, you can imagine reading those numbers and being like, Susie, I, were, I remember one time. This is when I learned that scratchers and lotto stuff is not for me. Uh, <laughs> I was playing the crossword scratchers like you do, and I was one scratch away. Like if it were that one letter, it would yeah. have been. Like not even big. It would have been something like a thousand dollars, maybe five thousand oh. dollars, something. I felt that dopamine, serotonin, like I was. I, it was <laughs> so high. I was like, "This is it, baby. We're hitting big. Oh my god, this, <laughs> this is the is moment. It. This is it." My this, like. Meanwhile, I've won literally a hundred and thirty-seven times, thousand times that on. <laughs> reality television <laughs> you know <laughs> but you're still chasing that high In this moment, you're scratcher I was, and and I, I scratched it off and it was not that and i was like oh never again never that was too much that was too i flew too close to the sun I, wings <laughs> melted crashing down bad bad feelings like i was like gambling is not for your girl yeah you just can't take the the highs yeah. and lows. So I can't yeah. even imagine what it would feel like if I actually <clears throat> scratched that off, got the winning ticket, experienced all those feelings, went to turn it in, and they were like, mm, this is just a tra- f- fakies. J- I know. They were like, mea culpa. Like, yeah. as if it's like, <laughs> LOL. you just throw that away. Yeah. That's the thing that really got to me. Yeah. That they were just like, oh, no, 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 no. Just throw that away. What are like, you saying? What? I can't. It's right here. Yeah, oh, I'm rich, I'm baby. I'm I know. I, really I will am. be I very. I'll him. be following that lawsuit because, yeah, I want those lottery hookers to pay. Pay. Wouldn't it figuratively be and literally? If he somehow got his money, then use it all to buy lottery tickets, <laughs> <laughs> and then one more than that. <laughs> It's been done. I know. It could happen. I don't know how yeah. you top 340 million though. That's a Oh real shit, jackpot. that's what he's going for. Oh no. Oh, he's oh. Yeah, there's a lot more than your $1000. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. You would think at that moment no. like my life is forever changed. I've made forever. it. I don't have to worry forever. anymore. Oh my god. Anyway. Oh. We're on his side. I'm glad totally. we both agree about that. Yeah. Outrage. Outrage. <laughs> did you um happen to see the documentary i think it's on max it's called they called him mostly harmless yes i did you did okay oh wow tell me your that thoughts. was an interesting documentary yeah it was well the premise that... is i'll just tell the listeners yeah, yeah the premise is if you haven't seen it um, that there was a man who was found dead in a tent out in, you know, the Appalachian Trail, I think, or one of those yes. trails. And they just couldn't figure out, like, who he was and what the heck happened. And so the the movie is ostensibly about that, finding out who this man was. But, I mean, w- I think Sarah would agree that the real... oh. It's about so interesting part about the film is about the people that like create these Facebook groups and think they're going to solve the crime. You know, my worst yes. enemy, all these idiot yes. detectives on like the just keyboard warrior, whatever. Yes. 
Um, yes. And what their lives look like and why they may be invested in all this. So, okay. I so that's thought the, it was such an, an overlap between the hiking and nature community and the <laughs> yeah. online sleuthing community. Yeah, you're and so right. And true crime. I'm like, the, oh, I, I love everything about this. That is so and, true. Yes. And so the way that you might be thinking, oh, well, pe I'm sure people, you know, go out into the woods and, and you know, maybe are, are living out there and then they just pass away. And, and that, the circumstances under which they found him were very peculiar. He had mm -hmm. good gear. He had... He was money. wasted away. He was very, very thin. And he had money. And he also, inside his backpack, found these pages of base what was essentially like computer code, like gaming code. So they're like, this is somebody who's somehow connected to the tech world. And then the more they tried to find like find out who he was, the almost like the less they discovered, like this person had no uh, uh, data trail, no footprint online, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. you almost have to go to great lengths to do that. Yeah. And then yeah, he was unusual. About, I thought it was also interesting. They talked a lot about what happens to a person after they pass away when we have no story about them, but they're found doing something like hiking and the people who met him create this whole story about who this person is. There's this whole online community dedicated to finding him because, you know, he's a member of the hiking community and, and we all look out for each other and blah, 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 and he's such a great guy. And then you find out that ain't true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was that was a shocking part too. And that is an interesting idea when you don't yeah. know something fully and so you fill in the blanks with whatever yes. serves you and then realizing like this person that you sort of romanticized and idealized as the sad victim in a tent and what happened, poor soul, and then finding out maybe that is not an accurate you know, description of who he was. Yeah. And then, I mean, first of all, I had no idea the hiking community was so weird. I mean, that, uh, let me tell you, that is, that, that is, uh, e East coast specific because oh, really, I have never in my hiking years. And I would say I'm, I'm on the hiking community, like on the peripheral like I'm not in that like doing that every weekend or going to the hiking clubs or anything like that but I went to a couple Sierra Club hikes in California like I'm you know I've never heard of trail names I believe that that's a thing I believe that they and I know that there are little trail books that you signed and sign and all that stuff and like I totally get it but this was like yeah, on this... a different level this almost feels like along that trail they've created this community because they had names they called themselves like trail angels or something never heard of that yeah the and trail I'm, angels... I'm out there i'm camping <laughs> the trail angels bring water and snacks i, yeah. I feel like there's I'm a lot like, of granola and like trail mix happening in little baggies but and then they... at the same time i can also see people doing this because people go out there with fucking nothing like Oh. Was it was it on that documentary or it, it, it's either on that documentary or in real life? My brother told me this that they found a couple people hiking and all they had on them was a two liter bottle of soda. And that was not they, in the film. Okay, then my brother said this. I, I the last few weeks have been a blur and I like blurred mm -hmm. a lot of things together, but, but uh, yeah. So my brother was saying that he people found are people that yes, that they go out there thinking that they have the right stuff and they were with a two liter bottle of soda and was like, Oh no, we have, this is our like water and that's different. Yeah. And so I like, mean, I, I see that, but I appreciate the sentiment that pretty much everybody in the film that was, eager to solve this case really wanted to be useful. And Arnold and I love that about them, yes. that they 
they want to do something helpful, but um, a lot of times I feel like they're misguided, Sarah. Yeah, and I think people are... Uh, I wouldn't say that any of them had good work-life balance. <laughs> We're being real nice because these people real are fucking nice. Um, unhinged. Yeah, and like, like this is lose their, their marbles. It's obsession. It's an yeah. obsession, and it's a fixation, and it's like I think it's a replacement for something. There's yeah, something like a, a life. Correct. There's something that you that this brings value and meaning. And there's another way that you're not finding value or meaning in other places of your life. And I think it was interesting. There was one woman that was talking about how she wanted to open up a, like a women's like, outdoor recreation center. And yeah. when she did do that, she became less involved in the online community. Yeah. And the other woman took over. And I'm like, okay, that feels like a good example of how you can get like – Online is not real life. Yeah. And you can get caught up in thinking that that is real life if you don't find meaning outside of online life. Yes, they were mm -hmm. useful in that way, but I yeah, would... Yeah, their intention was in good. Yeah, I would be interested to hear from their family or other people that were maybe close to them about what they were like as people during this time. I bet not very fucking present. <laughs> Right. Well, I'll tell you that what those uh, trail angels should take out on those hikes is some liquid IV because those hikers Absolutely. really could use it. I mean, it's this stuff me will alive. hydrate you. <laughs> and you IV. I know. I'm so glad that's been helpful to you. I my, mean, before my surgery, the doctor said, I need you to wake up three hours before you leave and drink the, drink a clear liquid to stay mm -hmm. with electrolytes like yeah. liquid IV. And I was like, that's awesome. Are you doing a commercial for me right now? This is <laughs> perfect. It's perfect. It's tasty. They have amazing flavors. They have sugar-free. And yes. I didn't receive them yet, but I ordered. They, I didn't know they had kids ones. And oh. so like, they have a cotton candy flavor that I think Link oh. would like. Oh, so I ordered yeah. some of those because I think he would really get into it. He likes, you know, when we're having a fun little dinner, he'll do, put, he wants like a, champagne glass or whatever and it's fun yeah. when you can make like oh, a fancy. different Who concoctions doesn't love that? yeah yeah like it's anyway however you yeah however what if i was like no there's alcohol in it um <laughs> just joking however you hydrate grab your liquid iv hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at costco or get 20 percent off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code candy at checkout that's 20 percent off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code candy at liquidiv.com all right. Well, I would recommend that film. The, the trail name of that guy was mostly harmless, which was, you know, ironic. Um, right. But it's called, they called him mostly harmless. Okay. That sounds fucking creepy. Yeah. I think he was harmful. He was harmful for sure. Yeah. R.I.P. though. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, did you hear about how there's in Florida... Um, like a mystery noise that the residents are like, what? Oh is that? no, this is not our first report of this. Do you <laughs> really? remember? Did you talk about it already? Yes, I did. Not in Florida, not but we talked about this in that. I even remember the number: fifty-five residents in either Norway or somewhere like that reported a strange noise. And then you said, imagine how loud the noise have to be for people to report it. Because if I heard a strange noise, I'd just be like, what? The, I don't, uh. And so like for 55 people to report it, like that must have. Wait yeah, a minute. Yeah. Was that one like the tremor one? Was that a, mm. remember? Because you said they called the Geological Society or something. Is that yeah, the same yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, maybe. But what was it in the end uh, on that one? I don't think they had an explanation for it. It was just a strange oh, noise question. Oh, well, we question have one. Mark. Oh. We have we have a straight, we have an explanation and it's great. <laughs> oh God, Florida. Of course it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're in Florida now. You're like, calm down, Sarah. Strange no, no I think cool. that's useful because like, what if this is like explaining all of it? Because that would be extra funny. Okay. In this case, it's like residents of Florida were go, you know, at bedtime, it was like nighttime and they would hear this horrible noise and they couldn't figure out what it was. It's like an eerie thumping bass. 
and it went Ooh. about a mile inland. And, you know, let's just have a fun little, let's make Sarah guess, because she'll probably okay. get it right. Game. Okay. Do you have a guess? Oh, I thought you were going to play it for me or something. Play the noise. No, no, it's just like, based this... on those clues. Okay, Could you an eerie, theorize? thumping bass. This yeah. sounds like a yacht party. <laughs> That's what they thought. They thought somebody's oh, okay. having a party or like... Somebody's having a party. Okay, it's being not a party. Being a hooligan. It's not a party. Is it animals fucking? Yes! <laughs> You know I mean, what this feels like? This feels like if I were to actually scratch off the last little thing on the crossword <laughs> scratchers. That's what it was. This is, you is get this zero, dollars, like? but zero dollars, but whoa, same serotonin. What a rush. What a rush. <sighs> is it animals fucking? Yeah. Yes, well, it you is, know what Sarah. tipped me off was that the loudest noise that they found under the sea was that freaking mantis shrimp or whatever, like flicking his dick. And yeah. <laughs> rubbing his penis against his stomach, and and that was making the last noise. They thought it was coming from a whale. So now I'm like, eh, everything's probably made in calls. Wow, good. Wow. wow. I that mean, was a fun kudos. Game. That Thank was because I mean I had. <laughs> I faith, love it again. My win. <laughs> that was a hard one. Yeah. Okay. So here's the details. This eerie thumping bass uh, is likely epic mating calls of black drum fish they make a bumping bass beat by flexing muscles against their swim bladder during mass spawning frenzies it's uh it's we really exciting time the for them like we didn't guess that by the fucking name of the fish Susie, you always say that your name gives it away it's the black drum fish like what's that loud drumming sound yeah but why I don't is know, it the fucking sudden? drum fish I don't understand why Maybe. it would seem like this would be a yearly event. So it must be a climate no. change thing. Mating season is only seasonal. Like right. especially in That's water. That's what I mean. So what I would imagine is that somehow the their area for mating has been pushed inland or something because of climate change or because of like deep sea something that they're doing yeah. out there. They're doing something in the water that's driven these fish inland for or there's something with the the different change in the temperature of the water like they need a certain temperature yeah. in order for them to do this and then oh, yeah that's why they didn't shows. Love they didn't suspect it or you know and even now i think like there's it's just sort of like we think that's what it is because they don't they can't see them doing their business oh my gosh i love this story why can't that, someone but, do that I, for I me love it, but i i what Watch you do your like, business? I mean, only fans. No, I want someone that. to send out that call. Make it loud oh. and proud. Like, Susie, I want you. Well, That's I feel nice. like a Adam did the, had the opposite, did the opposite thing. Yeah, he's subtle. He was like just listening to <laughs> you with the microphone and was yeah. quiet. I'm the, uh, I'm the drum. Yeah, I'm you the might have, you, yes. That's exactly what happened. This is like the I texted the Adam. Oh, thank you. I texted Adam because whenever you got it right, I wanted to push this button. And, oh. and my soundboard didn't work. So I was like, oh. Adam, we have an emergency. It's trivia emergency. related. Quick, add it. <laughs> <laughs> trivia related what if emergency. My mating call is just like texting Adam. Hey, can you fix yeah. my soundboard? <laughs> thank you. Like, right, I'm on it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, great guessing. Really impressive. I never would have yeah. guessed that in a million years. Just telling you right yeah. now. Well, one of the other things that I saw at the Na Discovery Nature and Science Center, D Denver Science and Nature Museum, whatever the fuck it was, was an IMAX movie on oh, the Antarctic. Susie, I am I am kicking myself for not getting the yearly membership to the museum <laughs> so that I can go because you have to pay for the the museum entry fee in order to see the movie, and then you have to pay for the movie too. So if I get both, then I could just see. I'm going to give you a little tip. What? I'm going to give you a tip. At least this is true of all my museums. Y you can just go on the website and there's like a media section and you can request like a media pass. And okay, go. I'm going to do that. I bet you. And then look at me. I'm giving them talk. I'm talking about it. We're sharing. Yeah, I We're mean, advertising. it's the least they could do. Least. Right. And so yeah. they had the film I watched was on the Antarctic and how much of it like 
there is a lot that is being discovered with climate change that is waking up a lot of things that are dormant and pushing mating to different areas. And it's, it's very, so this kind of, as interesting as the story is, as much I love this story, it's alarming to me because big changes in mating habits or reproduction cycles of very important food along our food chain is like not mm-hmm. a fucking good sign, people. Yeah, it's bad news bears. Bad news bears. I mean, some mm-hmm. hopeful stuff at the end of the documentary like they do. Yeah, they there just do one, that so oh you don't God. leave crying. There was one scene, I there was one scene, I have to talk about this, that was a... Le- a uh, uh, some seals that they go up on land to or on the ice to have their babies because the babies can't swim until they're like 10 days old. So they have their little pups and then they have to just use their blubber and their body weight to protect the baby from the snowstorms. And it can get as cold as negative 90 degrees. What? And so this mom seal is like, this storm is too much. I have to say myself, she goes back in the water, leaves the seal, and then the music That's gets all sad. sad. And then I hear 20 children around me go, what about the baby? What about, oh, and I'm no. like, oh my God. If I have to do an emergency counseling session for 40 <laughs> crying children because yeah. like group therapy for all these crying children or their parents, because like, please, please do not, and thank God, they, they knew who their audience was, and then they, like, miraculously, the pup alone by itself survived, and you see the little pup crawling over, and you're like, okay, mom, why'd you ban your baby? I mean, you should have just stayed this there. is probably but a good lesson. I, I was terrified when I heard, no joke, 20 little voices, the kid sitting right next to me go, dad, what about the baby? What about, I was like, ah! Please, nature what? documentaries do not do what nature documentaries often do. Man, David Attenborough would never. Yeah, right. I want I Gosh. want like the adult version of that because I feel like that was maybe edited to save the children or something. Yeah, right. They're protecting your feelings. Oh, Yeesh. I was like, I was like, oh, looked at you like, like oh, no. It oh, is no, weird no, no. how, I mean, there is a limit to like maternal care in the wild. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. I'll do like, some. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, they prioritize like this. I, in a way, like this is like a lesson that I, I often have to talk about with a lot of moms that I work with. And, you know, they always use that analogy of putting your air mask on you yeah. first. And they, they love that. How one. they, of course. I'm just joking. And but yeah. But I do. I mean, you have to, that we have to care for ourselves in order to be able to care for anybody else. And you, it's almost like the other societal messages of like, don't prioritize yourself. Yeah. And like that, that, like a social, you know, message that we get to make us not do that because when you take that away, mm-hmm. that mom's like, it's fucking cold. If you're dead, I, I, if I'm, <laughs> I'm dead, you're definitely dead. So let me just go make sure I'm dead so I can maybe have another one of you and carry on this <laughs> oh, lineage. Oh, right. Okay. That's what they're doing. They're like, I got to protect me because maybe next season I'll, I'll – the storms won't be as bad. Yeah, redo. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, oh. being a parent is hard, and mornings are a real tough one around here, but they are much better now that we have Hatch Restore 2, the sunrise alarm, and sleep machine. It, so awesome. This is a game changer. For it is. For anybody who has, like, I know for me, sleep is something that's hard to regulate. mm and there are so many, I don't know, different things we experience that disrupt sleep. Yeah. And we know, like, that's where it starts. So this is a way to get a good sleep rhythm. It's funny. I was, yeah. My supervisor had been referring client, like, uh, uh, recommending this product to clients before she even recommended it to me. And then when I that's found awesome. out it's one of our sponsors, I'm like, ha! <laughs> yeah. Well, that's perfect. It that's is perfect. Great. And Sarah's right. It teaches your body when to wake up and how to when to go to sleep. Creates these routines that prioritize rest. So it's awesome. It's just great if you have kids that don't want to wake up. Um, there's exclusive content also on their app, Pillow Talk. It's a new audio series designed to entertain you to sleep. That's cute. Um, 
And that's, you can do without screens. So that's nice. You can get to sleep without relying on like that yeah. light. It makes such a big difference. Right. Right now, Hatch is offering our listeners $20 off your purchase of the Hatch Restore and free shipping at hatch.co slash brain candy. Visit hatch.co slash brain candy. Get $20 off and free shipping. Hatch.co slash brain candy. And as always, all of our codes are on our website, and we are so thankful when you use them. It helps us so much. Keeping the lights on. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes Next I have up conversations with friends. Oh, it was the Hatch thing. Oh. My friend Ashley. I was talking to her, and she said... She had the app on her phone, and I was like, did you get a hatch? And she was like, yes, I love it. And I was like, motherfucker, that's one of our... D- call me first. I, <laughs> everything that you like, I'll get you a discount on. Use yeah. my code. I could have helped you code, up. Like, baby. Oh, I wish I knew that. Like, wh- why don't people wow. talk to me? Like, help me out. <sighs> Come on. Help me help you. We don't ask for saying. much. <laughs> help me help you. Yeah, don't pay All for right. price. What are you doing? I love giving people a bargain. Me too. We're doing yeah. the Lord's work over here. Yeah. Speaking of um, bargains, debating. you know what I'm seeing a yeah. lot of that I am so obsessed with? All these new, inst- like, young kids with, with a uh, interest in only getting things from the thrift store. And this new trend of, like, upcycling and, like, this, this going back to, like, older fashions, tailoring things... I am. Mm-hmm. Is it just me who's seeing this, like wave of? Yeah, I do younger... think there's a movement for sure. Yeah, I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm very hopeful about this. Yeah, but Feels then like I also see camps. the other extreme where it's yes. like people buying like on that Shine or whatever that those yeah. terrible websites are. Yeah, like a lot of people really love all that stuff because it allows them to buy a lot more for less it's like one way or the other right it feels like people are in one camp it's like yeah it does it 100 percent. yeah but i'm with you i'm a big fan even when i was sending your birthday presents i was like i hope she doesn't mind that i used like real wrapping paper because like, <laughs> you were allowed. like <laughs> you're like birthdays are too much waste that i mean this is the this is problem is that i make these announcements and then people take it like i said to eli one time like Anybody who buys flowers on Valentine's Day is a fucking idiot because who would pay three times as much for something that the day after you can get the same price? Guess how many times I've gotten flowers on Valentine's Day? Zero. Uh Why? Because he's like, you made a big announcement. I'm like, okay, but that means you like. Buy a plant. Right. Right. Thank you. You go buy a plant instead. Something that's not jacked up a price on that day. Yeah. That's it. I'm just frugal. they They take it too literally. Right. So and like we're not gonna turn them down if you hand them to us, right? Duh. <laughs> oh, let me not throw them right in the garbage. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like that lottery ticket. Yeah. Okay. Um. There was this study. I just—it's so weird. This was in the New York Times, and the article was called "Our Rodent Selfies." comma ourselves a photographer trained two what? rats to take photographs of themselves and they didn't want to stop and no you... i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> what everything of, all i'm hearing in my head is that song let's take another selfie you know that song that was like <laughs> popular oh my god i'm gonna play this for you and you're gonna really laugh and i'm just imagining two little mice like drunk at the club like in the bathroom taking selfies. Yeah, I mean that's just, and you would love this article. Um, I'll have Delia put it in the newsletter because it's got these huge selfies that the rats took, and it's like they are standing on you know like in a cartoon those like boxes with a handle yeah. on top that like has dynamite. TNT. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's TNT box or whatever. That's like what their selfie machine. How they did it? Like they okay. had to hit like a button. And then they got to see themselves on on the screen right then. And but they don't they, have any sense of self. Well, oh, I mean, maybe they didn't know it was themselves. But they but know they recognize thought, that they I like that get guy. To see another was, rat when they push that. Yeah, uh, we don't know. It's just oh. a, it's a curiosity because they trained them, of course, using you know drugs and food and stuff like that to do it but then 
long after they stopped giving them any rewards, they wouldn't quit with that with the selfie machine. Okay, and because these pictures there are has hilarious. been the introduction of a reward with that action. Mm-hmm. So their brain has painted a map, a road map. This is what they say when they say it's the the um, like the pleasure pathways of the brain. Yeah. yeah, like there's a pathway that's been created to pleasure yeah. through that activity. So even when you take the pleasure away, the brain goes, "Well, if I follow this path, I will get that reward." And in a way, you look at how most of the things that we post online or our interactions or our selfies don't give us that dopamine hit that we're looking for that maybe we got the first time or whatever. So in a way, it's like not paying us out for that. But our brain keeps thinking, I should keep doing this because maybe it will in that one way it used to or one time or few times that it did. It's totally gambling. It's like a slot machine. It, yeah, and I mean, it's explored in the uh, new Michael Easter book who wrote Comfort Crisis. He has a new book mm. called Scarcity Brain, and he Ooh. describes this idea and how, you know, like you say, slot machines and stuff are are built on this model of unpredictable rewards. So, like, you know that you're not going to win every time. Right. You, you just don't know when you are and that, that your brain is programmed to and the lottery want... effect. Yeah, I guess so. That's true. And social media. Yeah. You 100%. know, the it's just the same. It's it's rewards. You don't know when you're gonna get them. Comments. Um, and don't you think Instagram and all those like in the same way the slot machine switches up how they pay out or when they pay out so does the algorithm. Mm-hmm oh, wow, weird, I posted this at the same time as this day. How come this one only got this one? Like, and then mm-hmm. people get so bent out of shape. I'm being shadow banned or whatever they say. Like, fucking relax. Like, everybody's, like, desperate to get their fucking social media fix. The part that I think was on the more surprising side is that even when you introduce sugar and and rewards that they can just have right there, they were still taking the selfies. So, you know, a sugar reward pathway exists too in right. their brain, and yet they would all, always choose the, this thing that was no longer even giving them sugar. I think that we've seen the same thing in um, like, like rats have chosen the activity that pays out only like pays out randomly over something Mm -hmm. that's always there before Mm -hmm. that sounds Mm -hmm. like something that I can't remember what study maybe some listener knows what I'm talking about and will message us this send us what Mm -hmm. I'm talking about but I feel this sounds familiar that it goes against what you'd think that tells us we this is why we maybe engage in risk-taking behavior or why we Mm -hmm. do something like gamble when we can just go to the nine to five job and get the guaranteed paycheck or whatever. Yeah. It's such, I guess it's just something to keep in mind as you navigate the world, because a lot of people and organizations are attempting to leverage these, um, quirks of the human brain. Yeah. And if you're aware of them, it's then you can moderate your behavior. But if you don't realize it's happening, you can get really sucked in. Yeah. It's kind of like little kids when they go to a candy aisle or when they go to a cereal aisle. All of the thing, and you as an adult can go, oh, I don't need, I'm not going to get wooed by the Trix rabbit. You know, I'm not, the bright colors and the marshmallows aren't going to tempt me away from, you know, a healthier option or whatever it is. But, Damn, that works on the little kid who doesn't have the awareness of the ways that those things are influencing their choice. I mean, it also works on the adult, though, too, who's just, like, tired or, yeah. and, and you know, busy. In mind. Totally, 100%. Because they put things at eye level that. that they want yes. you to 
you know, they position things. Everything is working against you. Yeah. If that prefrontal yeah. cortex, that executive functioning is at all not online, if it's under stress, if it's made a lot of decisions during the day, if it's like thinking about, then you are going to be operating in that automatic, like animal brain that yeah. does, let me get the most get good the feelings, the fat, let me take a selfie. Exactly. Let me get the most good feelings the fastest. Yeah. It was cute though. I'll, uh, I think you'll enjoy looking at it because it is funny. To see I, I definitely want to see rats taking selfies. <laughs> <laughs> what if they all started um, making duck lips? <laughs> all right. That's like the next evolution of this. Uh, peace side. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm always jealous okay. of girls who can stick their tongue out and look cute. Like it just. Hmm. You don't I, you feel like you don't have the face for it or what? No, I have too big of a tongue. Huh. What, too so, wide or? Just too everything. Like it's just too, it's like that's all we're looking at. Too too small of a mouth for how big my tongue is. No. I when did you so. first decide this? When I could realize that I could touch my nose with my tongue and nobody else could. And then I was like, let's do some tongue comparisons and I was like Whoa, and you shit. don't think that has anything to do with like the, the physiology of like the distance between your nose 100% and your mouth? it does okay, okay. <laughs> yes just checking yeah yeah that's what I'm saying okay. everything in ratio or like in in, in relation to yeah it just oh, okay. Looks, it does, okay I'm just saying it doesn't look cute Inter no no I girls do that I know I'm you like, regret well, bringing this up but I, I am so into it <laughs> <laughs> and every time I do it I look in the picture and I'm like you scrape your tongue or like brush your like I wow. you know I notice like Man. and I do a daily it's not even bad but I'm just like a lot yeah, of self self much, criticism on too over much there. area too much geography out there no you talk about geography you know how about I have the geography tongue I sure do I mean there, things could be worse Sarah because that yeah. is not cute yeah yeah you got the continent I have an atlas your tongue. yes you do <laughs> yeah. that's fun okay last thing let's see mm. last thing this episode went so fast i know flew by we were just talking about the hiker there was a documentary called the truth about jim which is also on max which oh. i really liked it was four episodes that was a real long one um but it was about this woman who had a grandfather who was creepy and abusive and like, you know, one of those people that's like yeah. dark, like a dark soul where you're like, oh, yeah. And so they she started like exploring different elements of his life story and accusations that were made about him or just, you know, the f divorces he experienced and all his kids and blah, blah, blah. And so she felt that he, there was a good chance that he might be a serial killer, uh, like a literal I serial I saw killer. the preview for this. Yes. Okay. And so she, the whole series is her just walking through that and presenting all the evidence and then deciding whether this could even be the case or not. Um, and it, it is fascinating in terms of the true crime element, but again, yeah. all these, there's so much true crime now that they almost have to have more to it for it to differentiate from all the other ones. So I think yeah. in this case, it's really considering that thing that I think a lot of people have where you have a family friend or a family relative where yeah. it just feels like something ain't right and it's usually a man and yeah. it's this sense of like you don't feel safe around them maybe or there's something that makes you unsettled but you yeah. don't want to make a fuss about it because you maybe don't have any oh. concrete evidence to... Because right. then if you tell someone, they're like, okay... You have a bad feeling? And, yeah. And you that can only really accuse grandpa of being a serial killer one time out loud before you're the person who's... <laughs> before you're you know, heading off to the old right. psych ward. <laughs> right. But I thought that was interesting because I do actually think it's relatable, which is sad that I think a I lot of women... I would agree. <laughs> know someone where they're like he if you heard that they turned out to be a serial killer you'd be like okay I see I can see that half of the family that I don't speak to <laughs> there's I'm on waiting the for the the <laughs> police to knock on my door and say 
are you a relative of so and so? I'm like, yeah. Luckily, none of none of my close relatives, Jordan Lucas, you guys are good, but <laughs> <laughs> brothers are yeah. safe. But I would recommend it though. I found it really interesting, and a lot of the relatives, a lot of his kids and stepkids were were women, and then of course he has three ex wives and. So it was a lot of women sort of comparing notes and being like, yeah, that happened to me or or whatever. And I guess it's in- more encouraging of us to do that a little bit more. Like, yeah, follow the gut a bit. Absolutely. Ask questions. and Yeah. Yeah, that was good. I recommend it. And maybe um, first talk to a therapist about how people are not all one thing and separating who you are from maybe who your family is. Mm. We should all do that. Yes. I'll bury this at the end because I don't want anyone being mad at me. But I told you before, I read this article about, (laughs) I think it was in the Atlantic. Let me pull it up. It was about people's attachment to their pets. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was the Atlantic. The article um, (laughs) is called Pets Really Can Be Like Human Family. And I we hear this a lot, you know, like people referring to their pets as like their fur babies and like, you know, feeling like they are as important as as people. And I don't happen to fall into that group. Um, I've never felt that way about any of the pets I've had despite my affection for them. Yeah. Well, I don't um, like to say pets are like people because pets don't hold you accountable. Pets don't, um, uh, they're, they're, the support that they're able to provide is, is limited. They are wonderful supports. They're very good at emotional, helping with emotional regulation. They're really good at being, but they're in a way when they're doing that working. Mm. And so pets provide a service for us. And I think that people confuse the service that they provide with like the same kind of support that like a family member or a child would provide. Like that's. Yeah. And it's indiscriminate. Like I've seen dogs that really love their weird owners. Right. And it's not that that dog sees something in them that we can't see. It's just that that's what they're (laughs) biologically bred to do. Um, And so it's a beautiful thing, that connection that you can have. But I I wouldn't go so far as to say it's like a person. No, you know, full full thing. But I will say that the loss of a pet can feel the same as like grieving the loss of a pet when you can feel like the loss of a family member or somebody like that. So we can have the same, we can like hold them in our, they can hold, they can provide that same kind of meaning for us. Let me ask you this though, because it sort of used that as an, an example of like, you know, when someone does lose a pet, how sad they can feel and how deeply they can mourn it. And that I get especially for a dog. But if you called me when Bo died and said, I'm sorry, Suze, I can't make it to record today because I'm mourning Bo. No. I would not be happy about that. I made it to record every day. People were saying like they want to be able to take like pet bereavement time off. See what I'm saying? (laughs) No, we can't. We can't be doing that. That's. What, because what I think is, is we are not getting better at handling difficult emotions as this a This is what I am saying. People. And yeah. I say, I think the majority of the work that I do as a therapist is help people navigate difficult emotions, whatever they may be. And we are, especially in America, forced this be happy all the time, so everything's fun and and celebrate celebrate it's like this light life but only it, it, it's just there's no a, 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 we have just a different relationship with death than other countries mm-hmm. do 
Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of that gives us this idea or this, this sentence, this message that we're not supposed to experience bad feelings, hard, difficult feelings. Mm -hmm. And so when we do something must be wrong, I must need to not carry on. I must, I must there, I must be falling apart. Well, no, these are the, the feelings, the difficult emotions that are the flip side to all the positive ones and all the happiness and all the joy and whatever. And we have to learn how to navigate and manage and, and feel difficult emotions and get through those. Cause that's what builds resilience. And that's what helps mm -hmm. us get through the next difficult thing. And next mm -hmm. time, you know, and it tells the brain, wow, look at, I did this really hard thing. <laughs> Right. And, and it, and it helps, it's protective. You know, that's why I love, I love the traditions around death in Judea, in Jewish culture and Judaism, because they, they give the loved one a task. Oh, you, your person passed away. We understand that you're not even going to know how to be a person right now. So you have a task. You get that person buried in 72 hours and then you sit down and you cry a lot and you do absolutely nothing for the next seven days. Mm hmm. Yeah. And we're like, the, we recognize that you can't deal with this right now. So you're going to compartmentalize and focus and do that. And then you're going to take the time that you need to grieve. And so you can do the same thing almost with the passing of a pet. Like I did when Bo passed away and I would come to work and, you know, you do your job and you focus and you carry on. And then you go home and you give yourself proper time to feel and to cry and to be sad. And then you the next day take a big deep breath and you do the hard stuff and then your brain goes wow i can't believe i got through yesterday i'm going to get through today too and then mm -hmm. you keep doing that and that builds resilience yeah i agree would you call your would you call bo family i would say bo like yeah but like not in that same way mhm mm i would say oh that and especially when it was just the two of us, you know, it felt like, oh, she's like my little, it's like me and Bo, we're like yeah. a team, you know? But yeah. I wouldn't say that, like, you know, I, th I think especially now that, that with having a hysterectomy and, like, having to think a lot about family and a lot about changes mm. with that, that Bo would never be able to feel the same as if I, say, had a child, yeah. You know. I'm sure there are people, though, very for whom I think so, but I bet you there yeah. are some people who, like, are putting them up on that pedestal with their kid. Because yeah. it said almost every American that owns a pet, all 200 million of them, almost all of them describe their animal as family, mm -hmm. and more than half of pet owner owners say they're pet is as much a part of their family as a human member. Almost that, half. See, that I hear, uh, that's hard for me because, like, I take a literal, like, like, what does that mean? As much a part of their family. So a part of the family, does that mean that dog engages in the day-to-day -day activities of the family, is always around the family, is eating with the family? If th that's, like, that like to I me can, is, like, I, a me uh, uh, so, yeah, but in that sense, Bo is I think that they're defining the it as... I would have to know if that's the exact wording on the questionnaire, but yeah. if they're saying as important, matching yeah. in importance as each member, that would shock me if about half right. said yeah. That would too. To if that. we're playing trolley car and it's like... <laughs> exactly. Let's get down to brass tacks here. And a chi your child. Yeah. I'm picking the dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> the end. To die, you're saying. To die. Just to be clear. <laughs> Correct. The child is living. That. Yeah. That, yeah. Let's I get down to I don't know who to needs to hear it. this, but that is right. the correct answer. <laughs> that is the right answer. I know you love, you know, Petunia, but. Right. We hit a deer the other night when we were driving. <gasps> oh, and no. And it's. There, because there's like an overpopulation, and it's like yeah. I was. I just said to him recently, I can't believe we've never hit a deer, because um, they're just everywhere. Yeah. But we hit one, and that was a real bad. Exp like it feels very sad. Oh no! What happened? Well, you know how they travel in groups, and so like you'll see one. So we saw one 
pass right in front of us. And then Adam's like, "Uh oh, and then the next one came right before we could stop. And so we hit it and it died. R.I.P. Oh, R.I.P. Okay. Well, I'm so, I'm glad you guys weren't hard. You said it. Those things, I know like that that those hopes come right through it's the windshield. Dangerous. It's oh my God. Can dangerous. you imagine like in Tommy boy? Right. That's like, right. In the back seat. <laughs> oh, God. You know I that thing back there? It's not an air freshener. It's a dead rotting deer carcass. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah it's not an air freshener. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I was just having this conversation with Eli because we were watching a movie where it was based in Australia and this woman hits a, a, a kangaroo and the kangaroo is like clearly suffering and she chooses to drive away and not put it out, put it out of its misery by like running over it again. And I, Eli was like, what would you do? And I'm like, I could, I could not run it over again. I would yeah. humanely stab it before I ran it over. <laughs> I know. I've Eli never... was like, how does that make sense? And I'm like, I'm not fucking kidding. I would rather stab a kangaroo than rerun it over. Because then what if you don't do it again the next time? You're just like back and forth. Now, like, that's a fucking scene. Now we're playing fucking Grand Theft Auto with this kangaroo's life. Like, I could not handle that. So I, I would not just think have you were to humanely say kill it. Like, I thought you were just going to say, I'll leave it there to die. No, because that seems oh. worse. Now you're leaving it suffering. You have to, it's not going to make it. You're either putting it in the, like taking it to get help. Or if it's like, this is stab it. Die, you're, stab it. For real. You'd get a knife out and just go to town. I'm not going to, t I'm not, it's not overkill. <laughs> we're doing how here, many Susie. times would you do it? One, a clean Cut, clean, real quick, in a place that would be very much like this is, you know, kind of like they say, I've watched a lot of Alone. They're like, you got to shoot the uh, the arrow right into the lungs or right into the, so it like, or heart, so wherever. So die is like instantly, not like suffer. Wow. You know? Well, I really That's give the you humane way credit. to do it. I, look, I didn't I mean to I hear what you're it. saying. I <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear what you're saying. It was an accident, I just... Susie. <laughs> did not She's picture so you like 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 psycho i with when the you shower I, my scene. arm is not coming up this is a gentle moment this is me taking More that like deer and slash. like finding the i don't know deer's carotid artery or something like that and we're going like one real quick and we're saying nice words and we're thanking it and we're like talking to the spirits <laughs> and then we're doing it and we're it's not like rant, rant, rant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're like, I'm not an animal. <laughs> oh, God. I did not see that coming. That's really funny. I'm we didn't have to face that. Right. I, yeah. <laughs> we did not have to face that ethical quandary. Thank God. We, yeah, it was just... It was like sometimes that. you hit them and they, you think, that, well, they're a goner, and then they just jump off right. and they go right. away. It, they're very resilient, those guys. Very. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow, I right. hope I'm resilient. We've been through a lot today. Yeah, we um, have. Thanks Life for death, listening. Uh, space, space smells like barbecue. Yes. Which is great. Guy Fieri smells like barbecue. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so uh, funny. For oh, sure that's tickled my funny bone. That was a good joke. Good joke. <laughs> uh, Sarah can't play scratchers. The stakes are too high. Too high. Um, but what I what I will do <laughs> is gladly accept anybody who wants to put scratchers in my stocking or give them to yeah, me as yeah, like yeah. a birthday present. Yeah, you that, know that. Love that because like I want to yeah. play, but I don't want to lose my money. Yeah, you have nothing to lose. Yeah. Um. Okay. Pets are not family. Everyone. Okay. They they can be like kind of family, like kind of like Alice on the Brady Bunch. Like she they loved her. But she's Listen, like not Carol. Oh, that's a good yeah. In Trolley Car, we're picking a family over Alice. <laughs> and yeah. you no member of your family should be someone that you have to worry about might eat you if you pass away in their company. That is so true. That just yeah. seems like let's let's use that as it's a just good, good sense. Good sense. Okay. Thank you all, as always, for listening. We love you. We'll see you next time.